on today for the uh, England Stadium Run ahead of Ireland versus England tomorrow. We have Richard Popcorn with us um, for a live section. Um, who would like to go first, please? James, we'll come to you. Thank you, James. Richard, no one's given you much of a chance. Can you utilise that? Can you use that in your favour? I think we're just concentrating on ourselves and making sure we get a performance that um, that we, we would like to be proud of. So, um, what we know is going to be a big occasion. There's going to be uh, a huge amount of motion um, from both teams. And we need to make sure that we perform a lot better than we, we did last week. How can you negate that emotion that Ireland will have St. Patrick's Day weekend, the crowd, the grandstand, all of that? How, how can you prevent that working their favour? Well, we have to play well enough to to uh, control the game as well as we can and try and keep the crowd as quiet as possible. Um, we'll see how easy that is and how realistic that is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. But uh, we have to play well enough to be, make sure we're well in the competition for the game. Um, we've come here to win the game. Um, we'll see how realistic that is tomorrow when we get out on the field. But we, we've worked hard this week. We know last week's performance wasn't acceptable and good enough from this team. And we're better than that. And we have to make sure that we bring that tomorrow. France were physically on top at Twickenham. Is there a point to prove? Did that hurt some of the guys? Uh, definitely. Look, we started poorly. We never really recovered. Um, and that was the key. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't the plan. But <coughs> as, as we know, when, uh, when the bullets start, start firing, sometimes the plans go out the window and we didn't react well enough and we didn't adjust. And effectively, we got what we deserved. So we have to make sure that doesn't happen tomorrow. Henry Arundel, I know it's not your area of expertise in terms of coaching, but what have you made of him and the impact he's made? Well, I think you saw from the summer, he's given, well, not even time and space, he's exceptionally quick. He, he can finish and he can, he can score something from nothing. So we saw that in Australia last summer in the, in the, in the first test when he came on. Um, and his, his opportunity to start a game and in a white-hot atmosphere and, uh, and part of international development, but also we think he's ready to come in and and make a difference. Has he got a big future? Yeah, 100% he has. We haven't got players with that out and out pace. He's a real finisher, and we've seen that at his club, and we've seen that at Tesla in part. So um, hopefully we'll see it tomorrow. Thanks, James. Richard, have you got any experiences from your extensive coaching career where you've had a heavy defeat and managed to recover next week? <coughs> oh, certainly at club level, you, you have that reaction. Um, uh, I'm not sure we were playing the second best in the world and then the best team in the world on the consecutive week. So it's a little, it's, it's a challenge to bounce back from the, the game last week against what you know, second ranked team to come to the home of the best team in the world at, at this point in time. Um, so we uh, we've got it all to do. We're under no illusions. Um, we've got it all, all to prove to ourselves and make sure we put in a performance that um, creates issues for Ireland. And look, like I say. There's no reason why we can't win tomorrow. But we're going to have to be exceptionally good at what we do. I imagine it's quite hard to kind of manufacture belief and confidence. How would you go about getting belief and confidence in a group that might struggle for it? Um, get back on the training pitch, work hard, make sure we're really clear on what we expect, and they know that. Steve's very clear on that. Um, and then we have to go and do it. And it's as simple as that. on a big start, we have to make sure our set piece is very good, we have to defend and fight for every, every scrap of ball, whether we have the ball or whether we don't have the ball, we've got to make every, our effort and our energy and our passion to be in the, in the battle the whole time, it um, has to be evident from everybody sat in the stadium and the, the players will bring that off no doubt. Can I ask you too about um, Dad Cole when he comes on, he'll put his under the cap ring He's a young man that worked really hard at his game, um, learnt from some great guys that played in front of him at Leicester at the time, in Julian White and Martin Castle Giovanni, and Coley worked really hard to, to, to get in front of those guys in the field. Um, I'm very proud of what he's done to, to play that many games for his club and to play, hopefully, his 100th test tomorrow 
it's a testament to one how good a player he is and his resilience to, to stay in the game long enough to do that. Yeah, I was going to say on the resilience note, obviously being dropped out of the team for a few years and then fighting back and not accepting it, that was the end. That shows a lot about the guy, I imagine. Yeah, look, he's just he has gone back to his club and he's played really well for them. Uh, he's been pr probably one of the form tight ends in the Premiership, certainly at set piece. Um, so to get the producer to come back into the squad, um, you probably wouldn't want the World Cup final to be last game, would you, for Coley? So he's worked really hard to turn the opportunity to come back into the squad. Um, and uh, but we'd, uh, we'd love to celebrate his under cap with a proper performance. He's not the sort of bloke to make a fuss of himself or other people make a fuss of him? We will make a fuss of him tomorrow, and rightly so. Um, he's almost, uh, yeah, he's almost embarrassed for it to be mentioned, which is probably the sign of the fella. So, no, he's um, uh, a, a wonderful player, a wonderful man, and to play tight head for, um, for that many games, certainly for the club, he's 350 plus games for his club, 100, 100 caps for his country uh, in that position, and um, that takes some of It's your last match with England tomorrow when you to France. What kind of state do you think you're leaving the team in? Yeah, you know, I'm always optimistic that we can get better. Like it, the situation we're in is because it's been changed very late in a, in a four year cycle. So, but Steve's a fantastic coach and he's, he's going to rebuild this team. Um, we've uh, certainly taken some pain in the last seven days, um, but that's, that happens. How we deal with that and how we recover from that is, is, is shows the character of, of the group we have. So, we've got some fantastic players in this team. There's some guys in this team that will come into this team if they are fit. And there's a lot of young guys coming through the, the age groups. So, um, look, there's there's a huge amount of optimism within, within this group that we can improve and get better. Uh, at the moment, we we we, asked, we we struggled last week. We got ultimately you get what you deserve in the game, and we got what we deserved in the end because that's how we performed. Uh, I don't think the previous three games were, were like that. So, we've got to make sure we, we turn up tomorrow and, and do what. Um, do what we need to do to make sure that we're in the game and compete to win. How much do you really try to a professional record? Yeah, a fair bit of fuel, but it only lasts it only lasts a little while. We've got to do that consistently. Look, Ireland will be very confident, they're a wonderful team, they've got great players, they've you know um, they've been together a long time. Um, so but we need to as a bare minimum we need to show how much we care about playing for this team. And it needs to be evident from uh, action on the field. How much, from the point of view, is it the case of keeping in the other? I mean, a couple of weeks ago, the biggest win in Cardiff in a number of years. And then you obviously had a very, very bad day. Yep. But how much is it a case of kind of just rediscovering the nerve and holding the nerve from the progress you've made before? Yeah, look, stick to the plan. Make sure we stick to the plan, believe in it. And when you know, ultimately, when it comes down to it, it's man v man, and we've got to we've got to want it as much as our opposite number. Okay, there's nothing else. I'll just check it. Yeah. The admin thing of everyone's fit and ready to go. Yes, all good. Great stuff. Thanks. Is that cargo section or no? No, just live. Can ask my question? Yeah. Oh no, sorry. Um, Richard, thanks. In terms of, um, is this match partly really about getting your players fired up? To you know, outside of systems, defensive systems, whatever, getting them fired up to to you know crash into tackles or to as you mentioned one-on-one -on -one battles. Is that partly what it's about after last week? Certainly after last week, I don't think we've ever had an issue with that in the previous three games. And like I say, we we were as um, combative as we should have been last week for whatever reason. Um, our players should be motivated. Ultimately, when it comes down to it, push comes to shove, you've got to be as physical or more physical than the opponents. Um, we, when that moment comes, we have, to, we have to front up and do that, which we have done and I'm sure we will tomorrow. I mean, we have to be tactically smart. Our set piece has to be good. And we have to have the look of the Irish behind us. Lovely stuff. Thanks, everyone. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Thank you. Thank you.